Thanks a lot, Karis. We are joined now with the man of the hour himself, putting together that 2021 National Cherry Blossom Festival artwork. Patrick Guyton joins us all the way from the West Coast. How's it going, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm really doing good. Glad to, I'm glad to be on this end of making the artwork because, you know, it was a labor of love there for, for some time. And, uh, you know, the exciting part of having it done and where it's supposed to be and now, and now shown is is really uh, completes the uh, the circle and the cycle of the whole uh, process for me. So very, very excited, very excited. And we sent those little pink packages out ahead of time. So I don't know about you, but I heard oohs and ahs all around the Beltway and beyond and people going, wow, this is amazing. Because when you oh, look good. at the artwork, there is good, so good. much work and so many levels and so many layers that went into what you created for the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Can you walk us through how something so complex and beautiful yeah. comes to life? Yeah, it's it's something that I've done for the past 12 to 13 years is working exclusively on gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf, uh, palladium and uh, uh, pure platinum. So it's been it's been uh, a substrate based art endeavor where, you know, I, I do a lot of different variations of things from landscapes to figuratives to still life to abstract. But the main core of what I'm doing is all centered around the substrate, which is all gold and silver leafing. So, you know, a lot of people see leafing in artwork and they see, you know, art that has usually leaf applied to the painting as an embellishment or in the ends. But uh, my process starts with the entire substrate getting gold and silver leafed first. And then all the artwork goes on top of that in subsequent layers of opacity and transparency and opacity and transparency. Um, I use uh, oil, uh, like like what when they would do a, uh, uh, a glazing technique, like a Flemish glazing technique. I tried to kind of merge the Flemish techniques of glazing and transparent paints in with the, you know, ancient uh, uh, gilding techniques and come up with something that, you know, is a little out of the box and new. So. Uh, making this particular piece of art, uh, the tough part is I want to encourage everybody to try to go see the original art because that's where the the, the real pop of the art is. Uh, it's difficult to photograph. It's difficult to to reproduce, which I've struggled with for for many many years, uh, trying to bring it to the masses. But uh, if you can get a chance to see it in person, you really you really get the understanding of of opaque paint versus uh, transparent paint and how they play off each other in a painting. So uh, the inspiration of that piece, uh, it's all done on 0.999 pure silver. So um, the first layer anyway, uh, and it's layered upon. Um, and I wanted to build on that as a layer. And, and on top of that layer is some of the opacity in the painting. And then on top of that, I come back in and put more pure silver on top of that. So the, the torrent of, of cherry blossom petals that are flying and kind of vortexing up, though, though all of those petals have been uh, and had new silver applied to it on top, so you're starting to get these, you know, layers like this of 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 uh, of context. So when you see it, it has that appearance that it's actually floating three dimensional up off the surface, and that was kind of the feel I wanted to go for. Background set in, the border that goes around it is all done in opaque paints, so that kind of sits in a middle ground, and then the vortex of the cherry blossoms, you know, spiraling up. Uh, creates the, the the foreground. But then you have also the additive of these two hummingbirds that have been put in there, kind of nabbing at the uh, the petals as they're, they're moving up. And it, I just wanted to get a lot of energy into that spirally movement, uh, but also bring in the colors. Uh, I tried to get the whites of the blossoms in that one state, and then I tried to get that real, uh, you know, uh, uh, magenta e uh, brandy wineish kind of colors in the other ones. I just wanted to, to kind of get them in multiple stages of vision. So how would you describe your style? Is it gilded futurism? Is it modern metal? What would you describe it as? Uh, 
Um, yeah. So I, I thought long and hard on that for, for a number of years. And so I ended up with gilded modernism. Hmm. So I wanted to take the, you know, the idea of gilding. I, I mean, I followed this, uh, uh, across the planet. I've stopped in as many places that I could go that have gilding as part of their history, as far as, you know, museums around the world from, you know, St. St. Petersburg to in Greece and Italy, uh, Japan, China, uh, as, as far and wide as I could go uh, to find the different avenues and techniques. So uh, I didn't want to really land, you know, in one particular area of culture to 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 flow from and i think a lot of, when a lot of people see this they think you know mainly uh, of an asian culture and uh indeed it was but i mean you know you go all the way back to egyptian times with plating a metal like that so each culture has had their their own take on it and i wanted to take something that was a little bit of all these different cultures and and so like when i do an art show sometimes it has a, an asian feel to it other times it'll have a byzantine feel to the show. Other times it'll have like a, you know, a, a more of a, a, a Southern European feel to the whole thing. So it's been a, yeah, it, it's been exploration and, and that's what I like and wanted to add in with the modernism part. I want to take the idea of, of gilding. Um, I was a sign painter for many, 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 many years. And I've been doing gold leafing since uh, I was a teenager and, uh, you know, fire trucks back when fire trucks actually had gilded re, you know real gilded gold you know embellishments on the trucks you know all the way from that to be doing bank windows with you know wells fargo or a president so and so on it and uh it, that's that was my first cutting of teeth with gold and, and silver leaf application uh was in sign making which you know oddly enough in america i think that's our touch with with gold leafing where all these other cultures have all these you know amazing you know <laughs> Uh, artistic, you know, d displays of gilding. Uh, ours is uh, fire trucks and, and bank windows. So uh, <laughs> coming from that world and then discovering all the different cultures use of everything and not just, you know, here and there in books or, or whatever, but actually going. So kind of dumb, uncultured, on art eye question. Yeah. How much silver is in this thing? Um, I, well, you know, I don't weigh it, you know what I mean? But like, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's the going price of, of the weight of, of silver. So let, like, for instance, like I'll buy, like, I'm really, I'm really heavily into the pure metals as far as like when I want to use them, I want them to be full pure and finding pure platinum is, is difficult. You can find a lot of like white gold that has a platinum coating on it, but I go to my supplier who they, they, they they can pick and pull from the planet so i said i want pure platinum 100 percent pure i don't want any gold i want it to be pure as that's it and and so he says well you know no one just stocks boxes of pure platinum leaf on on shelves so uh five thousand dollars to them first then they employed the company to make it then three or four months later i get you know this much, you know, little books of platinum in the mail that I then can make like two paintings out of. So let's just say, you know, there's like twenty five hundred dollars a painting in just the leaf alone. So the uh, thought and love and and time that goes in and money that goes into yeah. art. It, I love to talk to artists about like the process and yeah. how it all how it all comes together because you look at it yeah. and then now that we've heard the story, when we go look at it again, you'll have this even yeah. better understanding for it. Yeah, it, it, it gets real volatile too, because when you're dealing with something that damages very easily when you're in the raw application stages of it. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if you're laying on platinum leaves, I mean, these little, you know, three and a half by three and a half inch squares that are so fragile, you know, they're so, if you look at them wrong, they just disintegrate before your eyes. So laying that down on there and not having anything touch it and making it as pristine as possible to the finished product is a challenge all in itself. And I think the, the most unsung part of the art that I've been making is the actual application of the, of the, of the leaf. So once it's like the piece that is there, that one's all sealed. I mean, it's got coatings upon coatings upon coatings. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's good now, you know, but when you're in that initial laying down the metal, I'm sitting there sweating and my hands are shaking. And it's like, you kind of got to bring it down because it can take hours and hours to put the, the leaf down.
So it's like the blossoms th themselves in a different way here. The meteorologists are like, if it gets below a certain degree, yeah. they're gonna ah. Yeah. So the, yeah I, there's we, that fine balance. We certainly appreciate the very fineness of, of, of a little bit either way can make things real messy. So yes, we yeah, completely get that sure. around here. Uh, so sure. one final question, you know, mm -hmm. doing the official artwork for the National Cherry Blossom Festival, huge honor. Um, is it something that you had seen other works and you were like, I want to do that someday? Or did, did, how, how did, how did it come about? How'd you get on our, in our Zoom and Bloom room here? How, uh, how did you become the official art auction? Uh, 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 one of the collectors that were that was doing an art auction saw the work, and I think because I do, I have done for over a decade like cherry blossom, uh, plum blossom. You know, actually, I should say I wanted to do cherry plum, almond. I think there was another one, but all the flowers kind of look the same. So, like a lot of the older pieces, I have there's all four, four petals in them, but it's you know it's supposed to be this. So I just kind of morphed my own. You know, I made my own flower that has a depiction of it just so it can kind of capture all the different realms. But I've been making cherry blossom stuff for, uh, gosh, you know, about 10 years solid. Uh, and so during the, the one of the art auctions that I did uh, la beginning of last year, I think it was the beginning of 2019, um, I was approached uh, about submitting some work for this to see if it would, you know, translate. And... You know, it's it, you know seeing the art. You know, I mean, if you take a picture of that, sometimes it's very difficult to translate what you're seeing in real life with all the the, the reflectivities and everything into a print, which is you know sometimes you know obviously flat. Uh, so, uh, with some success, with hopefully all the success now in being able to transfer it into products and and you know print work and all that kind of thing, uh, uh, that's kind of what where where it's settled and. Uh, yeah, it was just a gigantic honor to be selected, a gigantic honor to make the piece and knowing you know, it can be added into the whole array of other pieces uh, that have been done. Uh, um, I actually know a, one of the past artists, uh, Simon Bull. Uh, I've known him for a number of years and uh, he he raved about his experience with it. So that was really neat. And, and Peter Max, you know, uh, I go back with him maybe ten years, so it's been uh, it's been just you know, like I said before, being on this end of it and having it done. There's this there, uh, there's a relief when I'm working with this type of, of art that is strenuous because of the fact that while I'm through these stages, it can get damaged so easy. So get, getting on this end of it uh, is a relief, and uh, I'm excited now to just see it. Uh, there in person uh with everybody else well we can't wait for you to make a trip to dc and to check yeah. it out and patrick thank you for your talent thank you for your beautiful you. artwork um thank and you. really being such an important part of this kickoff today for the national cherry blossom festival 2021 it's happening yeah. and there's yeah. going to be virtual and hybrid components and we just are so appreciative that you're thank on you. this journey this this brave new cherry blossom world with us thank you so much i'm very excited and uh, just can't wait to to get there and get involved with the whole festival.